Hello and welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel. This is going to be our video exclusively about the Celtic women's side, the Celtic girls, and their 4 nothing win yesterday in Aberdeen. So for those who don't follow the girls, just a wee bit of advance warning, this is solely about the women's side. Celtic uh, went up to Aberdeen for our, an away game in the rain and wind of... Aberdeen. Uh, it was one o'clock kickoff, and it was in rather uh, stormy, wet, slippy, windy conditions, and that made ball control, shooting, and general passing all very difficult. And um, the Celtic side in the end came out as four nothing winners. Alina Sidic, who was a wee bit disappointed, I think with the performance as uh, she thinks that the team could have scored several more goals and certainly Celtic did miss quite a number of good chances um, particularly in the first half Aberdeen did dis defend extremely well rather disappointingly also Aberdeen seemed to be playing for time wasting tactics pretty much from kickoff number one and indeed one of their players got booked late in the match for time wasting and then a few minutes later, uh, got sent off for her second yellow card when she pulled down Hannah Kerner on uh, Celtic's right wing. So Celtic um, keep their 100% records to the start of the season. They have dropped from second equal to third as Hibs managed to beat Motherwell by five goals to nil and Rangers a very comfortable 9 nothing away win against Montrose and so they have extended their goal difference advantage over Celtic. Still plenty of time to overhaul any advantage Rangers have in goal difference and I think the season's probably going to come down to the four Celtic away Rangers matches, the four Celtic and uh, against Glasgow City and Rangers against Glasgow City and also who can keep 100% um, records against Hibs and Hearts, as I think those two are going to be difficult opponents. And indeed, Hibs are Celtic's next opponent, which will be a home game on Friday evening. So Celtic did score four goals in the end. And I'm just going to pop those highlights in in a wee minute or two. But in essence, Murphy Agnew scored a nice header in around about the fourth minute. Lovely cross by Maria McEnany. And she had a wonderful glancing header, powerfully passed the hit the Aberdeen goalkeeper. A lovely cross by Jenny Smith at around about the 21st minute. And Amy Gallagher had a sliding back post finish from around about the six yard line to put us 2 0 up, which we kept till half time. Shortly after half time, the 48th minute, Jenny Smith had a cross come shot, then got blown in by the wind. At the goalkeeper's back post to put us 3 nothing up. We then saw the fourth goal, which was a wonderful long-range uh, thunderbolt strike by Matilde, Matilde Carsons that put Celtic 4 nothing up in the 65th minute. Uh, we then saw the return from long-term injury or injury of Kit Lefersky, who had a lively game up front. Um, Celtic did manage to score a fifth goal, which was rather confusingly disallowed by the referee and the assistant referee. Um, it was said to be that Lafarski was offside and obstructing the goalkeeper. Um, however, um, the goalkeeper was nowhere near Kit Lafarski. Kit Lafarski simply ushered the ball over the line with an Aberdeen defender a few yards behind her. And so I guess the message from the assistant referee and the referee was that Kit Lafarski was obstructing the Aberdeen defender from clearing the ball, which uh, would have made her in an offside position potentially. However, no crying over spilt milk. The referee and assistant referee disallowed the goal and there is no VAR in 
the SWPL at the moment, and so the disallowed goal stood. I'm only here for the party. Trust me, we just getting started. The sound, the vibe, I feel so alive. I'm only here for the party. Trust me, we just getting started. The sound, the vibe, the face, that's what the heart is. I'm only here for the party. changes to the side and Celtic do look a wee bit like they're still not quite sure who their best 11 players are. We seem to play yesterday's game with just, just, just Kelly Clark playing her 300th game for Celtic and Caitlin Hayes in defence. Caitlin Hayes, as she often did, spent much of her time in midfield and in attack and Kelly Clark actually managed to Keep control of the Aberdeen lone striker pretty much for 95% of the game, although Lisa Rogers making her full Celtic debut in Celtic's goal, deputising for Kelsey Doherty, did make one nice uh, confident save to keep Celtic's clean sheet. Um, so it did look a wee bit um, jumbled up and confused in midfield, also seemed to be struggling a wee bit linking midfield and attack 
Um, Sosha Noonan missed a couple of good chances also, and she was one of three players taken off at half time with Natalie Ross, Hannah Kerner, and Matilda Carson coming on for Maria McEnany, Lucy Ashworth Clifford, and the aforementioned Sosha Noonan. Uh, and later on, Shannon McGregor also came into midfield, which I think did improve things a wee bit. And as I said, Kelly Fersky made her long awaited return from injury. And I think her pace and goal scoring ability is going to be very important for Celtic. I think Celtic do need to make a hard decision as to who is best to be in that linking position between midfield and attack. Is it Matilda Carsons? Is it um, Amy Gallagher? Is it Murphy Agnew? And just who are Celtic going to play up front? Is it going to be Amy Gallagher, Murphy Agnew, Kit Lefersky, Sorsten Noonan, or a rotation of those ones? I personally would like to see as a starting lineup um, Amy Gallagher and Kit Lefersky as a partnership with Matil Carson in the um, attacking midfield space behind them. But we'll see what and Elena Sadiku comes up with for the game against Hibs on Friday. And then we'll have, soon after, the Champions League qualifiers. And then after that, we'll have the first of what could be very important games between Celtic and Rangers women's sides. So just a wee recap of the stats for the game. As I say, Celtic won 4 nothing. Uh, Celtic had 79% of the possession to 21. An amazing 30 shots to 5 for Aberdeen. 14 on target by Celtic to 1 by Aberdeen. Uh, 9 off targets by Celtic, 4 off targets by Aberdeen. Um, the Aberdeen defence blocked 8 shots by Celtic uh, players. The Aberdeen goalkeeper made 9 saves to just the 1 by Lisa Rogers. And Celtic had 16 corners to 1. I think that pretty much reinforces Celtic had the massive bulk of the play. The massive bulk of the goal mouth action. They had lots of shots, some on target, some blocked, and some very well saved by the Aberdeen goalkeeper, who kept the score down very well. And 16 corners to one again shows the massive dominance Celtic had. And my personal feeling is um, with that level of possession, that number of shots on goal, it's going to click very soon, and Celtic will start getting back to their goal-scoring great exploits of last season. And what's more, I think Celtic uh, do have good depth in their squad. Lots of players can come off the bench and make a difference. And I think that could well be the key to Celtic winning um, the league again and winning in the Cups also over Rangers and Glasgow and the others uh, because Celtic are going to have the squad depth to cope with fatigue, injury, loss of form and the vagaries of the, the winter weather in Scotland and a rather long women's season also in Scotland and for Celtic hopefully lengthened by several games in the Champions League if we can get through rounds one and two of the qualifiers. So that just about finishes things off for today's uh, Celtic Women's Side Edition. If you do like um, the channel, like these videos, like the coverage of the Women's Side, please do click that subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, please click the like button uh, also. And comment section open in this scenario for comments on the Aberdeen match, who played well, who didn't play so well, any changes you'd like to see Elena Sadiku make to the team over the next few weeks so for today thanks for watching thanks for listening a goodbye and hail hail